Back at it again. Here's chapter 13. Talking about how to interpret a 12 lead EKG. 12 lead EKG is a diagnostic test. Its primary purpose is to identify the presence of uh, mitocardial inf infarction or ischemia. Also useful in identifying arrhythmias and other conditions. Patients at rest, usually um, usually in a subprime position. It's typically when you would do um, EKG, just like how we practice in the lab, person has to be laying down. Um, your body's a lot more relaxed in this position, um, which makes it for it easier um, to see what's going on. All right. Six steps of 12 lead EKG interpretation. Um, interpret the basics. Identify the rhythm and calculate the heart rate. Again, heard me say it a thousand times. As long as you stick to the basics, you won't have a problem here. All right, step one, interpret the basics. All right, um, PR, PR interval, QRS, um, your QT interval, um, determine the accent quadrant. The axis is a method of determining the mean direction of the current flow of the heart. All right. Check for bundle branch blocks and hemi blocks. Check for ventricular hypertrophy. Use V1 and V5 through V6 to check the QRS complexes. Six, determine the presence of miscellaneous effects. Check for myocardial infarction or ischemia. <clears throat> All right. So the normal 12 lead EKG looks like. Okay. You notice that the the area the arrows that you see Just to point out a few of them, um, they indicate the correct direction of the QRS complexes. Okay, um, they both represent the conduction uh, conduction block in a bundle branch, uh, in the bundle branches. Um, you see that the polar polarization is above the the vent. Um, Let's see what else we got. Um, determining if the following QRS uh, morphologies are normal. If not, tell what the abnormality is. By analyzing the morphology of each lead, you can get an idea of whether there is there is any other pathology on the EKG. So, this was talked about in chapter one, I do believe, when we mapped out, when you were required to map out the, um, what the QRS complexes should look like and think, nope, wasn't chapter one, I apologize, retract that statement. It was actually chapter two. And you were required to um, map out these things, break down the um, the QRS, the RSR, and things of that nature. All right. So let's look at this one. Um, dum -dum -dum -dum. See, leads one, two, and three. I think they're positive, so they look good. Um, leads AVR, AVL, and AVF. The AVR current should be going down. The AVL should be going up. You see that. AVF should also be going up. All right. And V1, V2, it should be going down. V3, it go either, could go either way. 
Um, same thing with V4. Uh, we can go go either way. Um, five and six should both be positive as well. Right? And we see that here. All right, we're not gonna go through the um, through the the rest of it. Um, but I just wanted to um, share something else with you guys. I had started on the the, the last slide, but I I stopped. Um, to help you with the, the determination of um, the step um, of whether you have a bundle branch block, one thing that you can that you can look for um, for sure, um, looking for QRS complex that'll be greater than than 20 seconds um, with distorted T waves, um, and they all be deflect they'll be deflected in the opposite direction of the flow of the current of the QRS com complex. Um, if it's in a uh, right bundle branch block, you'll see an, uh, an RSR um, QRS complex in V1 and V3 with slurred S waves in 1 and V6. Um, if there's a left bundle branch block, you'll see a deep S wave in V1 through V3, tall notched R waves in 1, AVL, V5, V6, no Q wave in 1, V5, or V6. Just a little extra razzle-dazzle to help you all with determining if there's a RBB or an LBB. All right, so we're not going to do these run through. Uh, the axis quadrant <clears throat> determination. Electrical axis, a, determining a, well, a method of determining the duration of the heart's electrical current flow. Normal heart current starts in the sinus node, which we all know that, the top right of the heart, and travels towards the left ventricle, the bottom left. Axis deviation current travels in an abnormal direction. All right? Causes of axis deviation, normal variant, abnormal axis may be abnormal for some people. Myocardial infarction, infarcted dead tissue does not conduct elect electrical current. I mean, you're dead, nothing's going on, right? So and it's no different from if you have some dead tissue in your, tissue in your heart. Um, the rest of your heart may be working, but in one area of the heart, we have no activity. Luckily for us, again, we have different pacemakers um, to cover in the event that something does go wrong if we lose one. Ventricular hypertrophy, hypertrophy, overgrown tissue um, requires more current. Right, so it's like um, just like with 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 weight and doing doing anything, you'll burn more energy doing something extraneous, a more extraneous activity like moving furniture. It's like how we talked about with with mitts. You'll burn more energy doing that than you would if you were reading a book. Okay, uh, depending on your your body type and size, you will burn more energy or less energy. Okay. Same difference. All right. Cause of axis de deviation. Um, arrhythmias can cause axis deviation, advanced pregnancy or obesity, physical push and diaphragm in the upright direction. All right. Chronic lung disease, pulmonary embolism, cause an upright axis shift because they're, they um, enlarge the right ventricle. Hemi blocks can cause impulses to travel in an alternate direction. All right. Um, and again, just referring back to lead morphology. This is what just looking at number one. That's how everything should look on the on the EKG. If anything is going in the opposite direction of what number one tells you it's supposed to be going. So if you look at lead lead one on a EKG, it should be positive and it's negative immediately we know that there's a problem and then we'll know um from there i believe we'll go look at something like v leads v v uh v3 to v3 to v6 to the to help with the determining factor hey, but we'll touch on that um determining the axis quadrant axis calculation requires a compass um hexiaxial diagram um superimposed on the heart Lead one runs right to left and AVF runs up and down. Axis circle is made by determining leads by joining ends of lead line. My apologies. Determine the axis quadrant. The QRS 
complex and lead one in AVF is positive, the normal axis is between zero and 90 degrees. Okay, has to be positive. I just mentioned that. All right. Um, if the leads, if the QRS and one and AVF are both negative, it's an indeterminate axis. I uh, just mean it'll be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Okay, the QRS and one is positive and AVF is negative. Left axis deviation, something's going on on the left side. Between zero and negative 90 degrees, QRS and, and one is negative and AVF is positive. Right axis deviation, so you're negative 90 and 100, 180 degrees plus. Greater than or equal to 180 degrees. All right, so this is what that is what that that looks like here. All right, so again, just saying that the um, if lead one is positive, let's find out lead one. All right. So we, it's what we, we're looking at right here. Um, and you see the breakdown on each of the other leads. Also, oh. Determine the axis quadrant. Look at the QRS and leads one and AVF. Lead one connects to lead one connects to right arm and um, connects right and left arms. Tells if axis axis on the right or left or left half of axis circle. Excuse me. AVF is on the foot. Tells if axis is axis is on top or bottom half of the axis circle. All right, um, QRS in both leads, one and AVF is positive, axis is normal. QRS in lead one and positive, positive and AVF is negative, left axis deviation. All right, if lead one and AVF are both negative, Means it's indeterminate. If lead one is negative, but AVF is positive, means there's right axis deviation. All right, and as this is just what that chart shows here, we see that leads one and AVF are positive. I mean, this is a normal axis. Lead one is positive, AVF is negative, left axis deviation. Okay. Um, Lead one is negative, AVF is positive. Right axis deviation. They both negative. It's indeterminate. We don't know what's going on. We have to look at look at some um, some other things. All right. So we're not gonna do the practice. All right. Bundle branch blocks. Block in right or left branch implies impulse travels healthy um, bundle branch through one ventricle goes slowly cell by cell on affected side. Seen only with superventricular rhythms. Ventricular rhythms cannot exhibit bundle branch blocks. Okay, results in QRS. That is greater than or equal to 12. Okay. QRS interval should be greater than or equal to 12. That's how we know we're going to have a right bundle branch block. In addition to what I said, the RSR interval on um, the slur S waves and 1 and 6, that's a right bundle branch. Um, if it's the left, you'll see that deep S wave in one and three, the tall notch R wave in one AVL and V6, um, V5 through V6, there's no Q wave in one, 
V5 or V6. Again, all this is going to just going to help you make the determination whether where your uh, where your block is. Is it going to be on the right or is it going to be on the left? All right, normal anatomy of the bundle branch uh, bundle branch system. Um, RBB is located on the right side of um, in the ventricular septum. Left bundle branch is on the side of the left side of the septum. Two divisions or branches called um, fossils. Phalluses. All right, and this is what you. Just seeing that here. So, got your anteriors, and you got your posteriors. Um, your right bundle branch blocks, and your left bundle branch blocks. And again, just notice how. Everything, because this this is this is going to come up later. All right. Notice how everything is opposite from each other. I want to do. That. Let me see. Switch it to black. See, there's a line between these two. All right. So now you see that they're on opposite sides. There's a line between these two. See that they're on the opposite sides. All right. So we connect the dots for y'all. All right. Um, the line between these two, they're on the opposite side, all right? Opposites, okay? So be mindful of that moving forward. All right, normal conduction, see V1. Um, V1, we see that this is positive as it should be. Okay. Negative, I apologize. Yeah, it's going down. Yeah. Let me make sure I can draw my baseline here. So this is going down. It's negative. All right. RBB, the QRS complex typically um, start out looking normal. QRS has an extra R wave at the end. And I told you. Mentioned that before, the RSR. Um, the second R wave is called the R prime and is written R. Um, block of right bundle branch. QRX greater than or equal to 12 with an RSR configuration. T wave slopes opposite terminal wave of the QRX. I just I've said that a couple times. Um, all right. See, so this would be your. Um, this is typically where your Q would be, but we don't have one. So you see your um, R S R. All right. See so that inverted T waves sloping, it's coming off the. And on the baseline. All right, so the right bundle branch looks like on an EKG. I'm not going yet. Um, left bundle branch can occur in two ways: block of the left common bundle branch, or a block of both um, fallacies. In either case, depolarization of the septum cannot occur normally. QRS complex will be greater than or equal to 12 with the wire QRS or RS configuration T wave slope opposite terminal wave of the QRS complex. All right. T wave should be opposite of what the QRS is, um, has going on.
see here, V1, still negative like it should be. Huh? Let's see that um that deep R wave. I apologize. I mean the deep Q wave. You see, you see clearly you see that there's no there's no R here. So this deep Q wave um, is elevated. It's the elevated T wave here. Uh, knows that we have a left bundle branch. Okay, so a left bundle branch should look like on the on a 12 lead EKG. <clears throat> bundle branch blocks can uh seen only at certain heart rates <clears throat> excuse me rate at which bb appears is called the critical rate conduction through bundle branch is normal at heart rates below critical rate once critical rate critical rate is reached one of the bundle branches become incapable of depolarizing rapidly enough to allow normal conduction okay the sense is what they saying to, to 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 break that down. As long as if every you can have a bundle branch and it not be seen, I mentioned that in the beginning of the the lecture. Um, but when the circumstances change, um, say when you are engaged in certain activity and your heart rate begins to elevate, um, if it elevates too high and it can't to a point where it can't keep up and you know, uh, depolarize the way it should. Then that's when you'll get the you'll see the um, see that you'll feel the effects of of this. It'll be become apparent that hey, that there's a problem. Can't catch my breath or whatever the case may be. Um, BBB disappears when heart rate falls below critical rate. All right, you'll see. Um, a person just again just be mindful of that because if it happens to someone you know, um, you know, say you guys get to the hospital and you you wait not there in the waiting room, um, all that waiting, and the body now has time to relax. They're like, oh, I'm feeling fine. It's taking too long for the doctors to see me. Um, they probably blow it off, downplay it. Oh, well, you know, I just got overworked. I haven't had enough sleep or whatever the case may be. Um, still. Still, still, still. Even if you leave the emergency room, we need to have a doctor's appointment set up, um, and we need to have an EKG done. Um, and this is what will lead to us getting a stress test, because um, you want to make sure that everything is is okay. All right. So, just the criteria for a bundle branch, um, for your bundle branch blocks. I went over this already. What you you'll see the R, the RSR. On the QRS complex um, in V1 um, for a right bundle branch. If it's a left bundle branch, you'll see the deep Q, uh, the deep QS, or the or the RS with no Q. Again, so you and you know we know that it's supposed to look like and have our P come down, then it'll go down and then up and then back down. See with that with the RS. Just be the P and it'll just go straight up to the R, come back down, and then there. This is what we're looking for for a left bundle branch. Okay. These are synonymous. All right. Um, clinical interpret uh, implications of a bundle branch are a uh, symptom of an impaired conduction system. RBB can, see, can be seen in normal, healthy hearts. LBB almost always imply cardiac um, disease. Risk for development serves AV block. A new bundle branch block should prompt a immediate assessment in the patient. This is what I just said. All right, um, hemi blocks, hemi blocks is where we at. Oh, let me get caught up. All right, hemi blocks. Um, 
a block of one of the fallacies of the the left branch two kinds left anterior hemi block um left posterior hemi block um left anterior results in left axis deviation left posterior results in results in right axis deviation um left anterior um much more common than lph um than, than your left posterior um left posterior has a dual a dual uh blood supply all right um hemi blocks that occur alone are not usually clinical clinically significant um Biovascular block, hemi blocks occur simultaneously with RBBs. Um, Predisposed uh, pre 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 the patient to AV blocks. Um, hemi blocks cannot accompany left bundle branch blocks. Okay, hemi blocks are going to be synonymous to um, RBB um, and if you have RVB, um, chances are there's a there's a black in the AV node. It's just just the sum of this this slide right here. All right. Um, configuration for the hemi blocks. See what it looks like in lead one and lead two. Um, so normal QRS complex. Both of them lead leads one and leads three positive. Um, configuration with a left hemi. You see lead one is positive. Lead three is negative. Um, for the left posterior, lead one is negative and lead three is positive, just like it would be when we're looking at the axis the, the axis determinant um, based off which of what we see in each lead. Okay. Uh, it's another algorithm to help you determine um, which is which. Uh, you ask these questions to help you make the determination what your interpretation is going to be. All right. Do these strips. All right, ventricular hypertrophy is excessive growth of ventricular myocardium in the affected um, ventricle, usually a result of disease. Um, thickened tissue requires more current to depolarize. Um, causes greater than normal amplitude of the QRS complex and EKG leads over the affected ventricle. Normal QRS should be no taller or deeper than 13 millimeters in each lead. Okay, we know that each little red square on there on the EKG is a millimeter. So starting at the baseline, counting up or counting down if you get more than 13 squares then hey we have a problem so hypertrophy all right this is what that looks like all right um rvh criteria tall r wave and v1 it's greater than the s wave right axis deviation where did uh we'll go back Tall R wave in V1 should be greater than or equal to the S wave, right axis deviation, T wave inversion, often noted. Um, that means you will often see it. If you see an inverted T wave and a tall R wave um, in one, then hey, it's RVH. Um, this is usually caused by chronic lung disease, right, ventric uh, right ventricular blocks up to push blood into the new high pressure lung system. All right, so just looking here, baseline, this is your P, there's no Q, there's no Q, so we go straight to the R, and here's your S. Down here, you see that the R is taller than the S, RVH. All right here yeah, same thing we see it across the board tall r waves um i'm gonna look at v1 v1 here we go 
CGS, CGR. All right, we see there's significantly taller RVH. All right, LVH criteria. R wave in five or six, whichever is taller. That's what we look. You go with your, whichever one's taller. It's gonna R wave in five or six. All right, S wave in one or two have to be greater than 35 millimeters. Again, counting the blocks. It's caused by hypertension. Lift vent ventricle blocks up to push blood out of the body against the great resistance of the abnormal of uh, abnormal high blood pressure. And we go back to um, those beginning chapters where we talked about the, the blood flow of the heart, um, the difference between um, the blood pressure with your diastolic and your systolic um, is, and just to get a better representation of that, um, LVH leaves one AVL, five or six have taller than normal R waves, leaves one and two have deeper than normal S waves. Okay, you see that here. Here's your R. My apologies. Here's your R. Look at the deep S wave. Look at that. All right. So we had like a little Q right here. Kind of it's a tall R wave here. All right. Tall R wave here. All right, so it looks like, look at that. Look at that V2, V1. All right, um, this is V5, V6, what we're we supposed to be looking at. All right, this is easy. Just count it out, see what we, see what your numbers are. We'll take the taller. Um, V5 or V6, looks like 5 got it here. Alright, break it down. LVH. Quick. Low voltage EKG. Some people have abnormal short waves and complexes. Alright. The cause of this, any conduction that muffles the cardiac impulse on, the, on its way to the electrodes of the skin. Examples include obes ob obesity. Um, Pericardial infusion, um, exedemic, um, exposemia. All right, this is what low voltage looks like. Okay, like you can't really see what's going on. Almost hard to interpret anything. All right. Clinical implications of hypertrophy: increased oxygen demands uh, by Enlarged ventricle, increased likelihood of ischemia of infarction, ventricular um, dilation, stretching of the my, uh, myocardial fibers, results from overfilling of the ventricle or inadequate pumping of the blood can result in hypertrophic patterns on the EKG. Look at look for hypertrophy and low voltage on the following um, EKGs. All right, we see here, so now we're not going to go through all these. You see everything on this side, now all is low voltage. Low voltage. All right. See some hypertrophy over here. All right, because we see the, the dark, the deep S waves, they start to overlap. Well, you can definitely see the, you definitely see the, uh, see them here. They don't overlap as bad. Um, definitely the most prominent here. Okay. All right. Miscellaneous effects. Um, digitalis medication given increase the force of the um, force of myocardial contractions, or to slow the heart rate in in patients with tachycardias, you all, you guys already know that because we went over um, went over medications in chapter 16. Again, just trying to bridge the gap the gaps between 
the chapters, bringing everything full circle. Digitalis effects, sagging, um, scooping ST segment, slow conduction um, through the AV node, prolonged PR intervals. Okay, causes of ST segment changes is unknown, seen at abnormal. At normal, therapeutic levels of digitalis does not imply digitalis toxicity. All right, so let's not get those confused. All right, digitalis effect. Yeah, we see that 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 sloping s that sloping st right there. Okay. Um. Electrolyte abnormalities, hyperkalemia, excessive um, potassium in the bloodstream, potassium levels um, greater than or equal to six, tall pointy T waves, potassium levels of um, higher or greater than eight, widen QRS complexes. Again, in chapter two, we talked about the, the sodium, potassium, and, um, and all these um, different elements that are being pumped, um, that are being pumped out of the heart. Um, so refer, refer back to those chapters to get a better visual and understanding of that. Cardiac arrest may be um, imminent if the potassium levels is not lowered quickly. All right, the tall pointy T waves, okay? And um, the, the funkiness of these, Q, these QRS complexes, all right? Um, electrolytes, abnormalities, hyperkalemia, uh, potassium deficient in the bloodstream, prominent U waves, flattened T waves, cause of EKG, cause of EKG change, repolarization abnormalities from potassium um, deficient. All right, got your U waves, real flat, tall T waves. All right, hyper, hyper. Hyperkalemia, excessive calcium in the bloodstream, short and ST segment causing short QT interval. T wave seems to be almost on top of the QRS, cause EKG, um, causing EKG changes. Excessive calcium causes shortened repolarization phase and action potential. And look at those, those tall T waves. Look at this. Uh, look at the QRS complex. I look how everything is almost on top of each other. Right. Hypokalemia, chasm deficient in the bloodstream, prolonged repolarization, prolonged ST segment causing prolonged QT interval. All right. Zar? Yes. You can tee all the way over here. They should just run together, go hand in hand. Look at the distance between your S and your, your T. Okay? Look how flat those T waves are. All right? And just break that down, give you what each one would look like, everything that we just talked about, the, the tall T, the flattened T waves, um, things of that nature. So review 1323. All right, that's it. See you guys in the next chapter.